Testosterone is claimed to be the hormone that makes men hyper successful. And these hyper successful men that you see on social media nowadays, the ones that claim to be alpha, talk about how it's okay for them to cheat, it's okay to be promiscuous, it's okay for them to sleep around, open on their end. And they say it's because they have high testosterone and it's okay for them to do it because it's a biological need that is rooted in their genes and they can't control it. But in this video, I'm going to present to you versus and scientific studies showcasing that cheating is driven by cortisol which is a stress hormone and not testosterone if you're new to the channel my name is alex Federsky and i help men master natural testosterone righteously that being said most importantly the credit for this information goes to jerchi dinkoff because he gave me idea and inspiration to make this video he has an amazing website with amazing articles talking about hormonal optimization from a Ray Pete perspective. So that being said, let's get into it. So the common belief suggests that high testosterone leads to cheating behavior, particularly among males, as a way to assert dominance among genetically superior beings. However, there is growing evidence that cheating, like addiction, might stem from attempts to cope with stress. This stress often arises from unrealistic expectations, which is rooted in high serotonin levels, or societal pressure that a single test or choice can make or break one's life. A recent study demonstrated that increased cortisol levels drove people to cheat. Those who cheated reported feeling less emotional stress afterwards, almost like finding relief through a fix or hit, similar to how stress is temporarily elevated in drug addicts. The study reveals that relieving stress activates reward centers in the brain, suggesting that cheating could be, become an addictive behavior. In isolation, testosterone did not directly influence cheating behavior. So this was a byproduct from here. And the main things I want to discuss is, so they took 117 participants to complete a maths test. So the actual study is rooted from cheating on a test, but I'm going to show you how it ties into cheating, addictions, things like that. Grade it themselves and self-report the numbers of correctly completed problems. The more problems they got correct, the more money they would earn. From salivary samples collected before and after the test, researchers found that individuals with elevated levels of testosterone and cortisols, cortisol were more likely to overstate the number of correctly solved problems. So, elevated testosterone decreases the fear of punishment while increasing sensitivity to reward. Elevated cortisol is linked to an uncomfortable state of chronic stress that can be extremely debilitating. Testosterone furnishes the courage to cheat and elevated cortisol provides a reason to cheat. So that's the key operative thing here. Here it showcases that testosterone and cortisol, but testosterone only makes you more courageous, which is not a bad thing. And high cortisol gives you the reason to cheat. Because ultimately, when it comes to true hormonal optimization, you want a ratio of high testosterone and low cortisol. That's the most important thing. There's no point making 10,000 euro a month, but your expenses are 10,000. You need a proper ratio, right? So this is the example of that. Additionally, participants who cheated showed lowered levels of cortisol and reported reduction in emotional distress after the test, as if cheating provided some sort of stress relief. So anything an addiction is a way to cope with a stressor and once you undergo that thing it lowers your stress hormones hence why you keep coming back to it the stress reduction is accompanied by powerful stimulation things like that so fundamentally where i'm going with this is any addiction that you have it's a way that your body learns to okay your stress is high and i do x it lowers the stress response so if i do it more often i can feel normal it's lowering inflammation it makes you feel better but ultimately not you're not fixing fixing the actual issue 
Another thing with the promiscuity and cheating, when your cortisol, how that ties in, ultimately when your cortisol and stress hormones are high, your body thinks it's going to die. So what it does, it becomes promiscuous and wants to pass on the gene. Hence why having a high sex drive and being super lustful and all those things is not really ultimately a sign of high testosterone. Testosterone does improve those things, but to a certain extent. After 600 nanograms per deciliter, sex drive does not increase. You get other benefits like drive, motivation, mindset, characteristics, all these other things. And another thing, when you have high cortisol levels, that always goes with things like high estrogen, high serotonin, other stress hormones. So when you get a spike in dopamine, when you have high stress hormones like estrogen, it gets cut in half. So you needed more. So that all feeds in it to itself. You're stressed out. You do something that lowers the stress, but it gets cut in half. So you needed more and you repeat the action. Then your sensitivity to it is low as, as well. So you're tolerant. So you need more of it, higher doses, more frequently, so on and so forth. While testosterone, when you get a spike in dopamine, it gets prolonged and it makes you think long term. Stress hormones make you very short-term thinking. Testosterone makes you long-term thinking. That's why testosterone builds businesses, X, Y, and Z. So the hormone testosterone cortisol influence did it. What does the Bible have to say? What does righteousness have to say? So God talks about, let's say, Hebrews 13.4. Marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled, but homemongers and adulterers God will judge. Matthew 5, 27, 28. You have heard that it was said of all time, Thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust, after he hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. This ties back into even looking at online content, watching all those things, lusting, you get a spike in dopamine, so you keep chasing it. So rather than stopping those things, you need to ask yourself, why is my, my stress hormone so high that I constantly have to chase those short-term term pleasures, right? Another thing, the link to the document, I'm going to leave down below in the comments if you want access to it. That Exodus 20, 14, thou shalt not commit adultery, adultery, cheating on your wife. Proverbs 6, 32, 33, but whoso committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyed his own soul, soul meaning your heart, you, and wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. 1 Corinthians 6, 18, flee fornication. Every sin that man doeth in is without the body, but the, he that committed fornication sin against his own body. Proverbs 5, 15 to 18, drink waters out of thine own cysteine and running waters out of thine own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. So this verse means basically don't entertain the bosom, bosom of a stranger. Don't sleep around, but stick with your wife, the wife of thine youth. So that being said, this was the video. Hopefully it makes sense. Give, gave you an understanding of the reason behind. I've made videos how to lower cortisol. If you check my channel, I made videos on how to actually do it naturally and optimally. And that being said, give me some other ideas for videos if you want to give me ideas in the comments down below. And yeah, that being said, I'll see you later. Peace. God bless.